So the, uh, the, the thing that's uh, a little tricky here is the idea of actually bending the beam. Um, so for instance, in um, uh, where the beam, where, where we don't use this bending magnet, such as in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the machine that uses a magnetron and a vertical accelerator guide, um, we actually get, um, we're actually going to get um, a kind of spreading of the beam, despite our best efforts, uh, we're, going to, we're going to see that the beam is actually going to uh, diverge a little bit. So our x-rays are going to kind of diverge out a little bit. And that, uh, uh, that, the, the, that reason, um, um, wait a minute, I might not be explaining this the way that I want to. Just give me a second here. The, the idea is that elect, the electrons are, um, they're all traveling at different velocities. So because of the fact that they have different energies, when they actually, uh, when they actually, uh, when you actually attempt to bend these through uh, 90 degrees, uh, what happens is uh, they will, uh, some of them uh, will go this way. If they're traveling a little bit slower, they'll go that way. Uh, the other electrons might go out like this uh, if they're traveling faster. So that's, uh, that's what happens uh, when uh, we use these uh, 90 degree uh, bending magnets. Uh, that was the difference that I, uh, that I wanted to uh, mention. It's actually not, um, it's not the x-rays, it's actually the electrons that are actually diverging here. So uh, if we have a bending magnet that is going to cause uh, this to uh, bend at right angles at a 90 degree angle, uh, we're going to see that because of the differences in electron velocities. We're going to see this spread. And that kind of phenomenon is known as a, that's a, a chromatic effect. Um, it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's sort of analogous to uh, light. If you've ever uh, worked with any kind of lens, uh, lenses that are not uh, corrected for, uh, for this chromatic effect, which has to do again with the light rays uh, coming in because the lens has a curvature to it. So they're actually going to be bent at different angles. And you can correct, uh, correct for that and make the lens uh, achromatic. But if you don't, you tend to see fringes of color uh, uh, in the image that you get. And that can be very interfering. And uh, you get the same sort of thing with x-rays. That chromatic effect, uh, that spreading, uh, also uh, tends to uh, make the, the beam more, more diffuse. Uh, there's a way around that, though. And we can make these things uh, achromatic if we actually send them through uh, 270 degrees. So to send them through 270 degrees, uh, we need something that's a little bit like a cyclotron. Uh, so rather than just having just bending at right angles, it's kind of like if we put if we have the correct uh, magnetic field, we can get an electron to go around in circles. And basically, what we want it to do is to come around here and then exit in this direction. Uh, when that happens, uh, we're actually going to get. Um, we're actually going to see something uh, that uh, these beam, this beam, when it starts starts to diverge uh, outward. Uh, let's see. Let, let me show it like this. So we have uh, we've got a beam. We've got our electron beam uh, coming in here, and then it's diverging as it is here, and it's going to come around and be bent around in this uh, 270 degree pattern, and eventually, as it gets around here. Uh, the beams are going to start to uh, converge. And somewhere out here, uh, all these beams are going to actually uh, converge to a single point, And then they'll spread out again. So we're going to get, here we're going to get convergence, convergence, The incoming beam was beginning to converge. Here it had diverged. And here, beyond this point, it's going to, we're going to get divergence again, which we don't want. So uh, it tells us that we want to put our target uh, right here. That's where, we, that's where we'd like to, like to place the target, at the uh, point of convergence. And uh, you can see that, um, that uh, on figure uh, 13, 16, 
and then uh, this uh, flat flattener or flattening filter that's put in there. Uh, electron beam hits the target, a photon beam comes out of that, and uh, uh, then this uh, other little device in here, this other little filter, uh, is, um, is actually designed uh, to flatten the beam. And flatten it, flatness is a, measure, is a measure of the variations in the intensity. And if you look at the beam, if you could look at it this way, you look at the uh, part of the beam that, is the, uh, that contains 80% of, the, uh, of the beam area. If you look at that, uh, the intensity of light that's coming in through there should not vary uh, by more than uh, plus or minus 3%. So if it's within that range, uh, we say that the beam is flat. The other thing that we're looking for in the beam is symmetry. So if we actually took the beam and divided it into half, and we looked at this half uh, versus that half, uh, then we would say that we, we don't want there to be any more than 2% uh, variation in intensity uh, from one half to the other half. Then, we've got a, then we can say we have a beam that is both flat and symmetrical, and that's, the, uh, that's what is most desired in any form of uh, x-ray treatment. The last, very last thing in here is uh, the idea of uh, safety interlocks, which are very important. And uh, it's going to be a good segue into the, uh, the final thing that I actually have to say, uh, which deals with uh, what happens when uh, safety features on an x-ray machine fail. And there's one uh, very uh, famous incident of that occurring which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Um, so uh, the safety interlocks actually are, are designed to shut the instrument down. Uh, they should be checking for uh, the instrument software is supposed to uh, check uh, for uh, beam flatness, symmetry, and also the dose that actually uh, reaches the patient. And that's uh, where, uh, at least in the case that I'm going to uh, be talking about in a moment, is uh, something that really failed. Uh, electron beams can be generated uh, by the same machine that we used uh, to, to generate the x-rays. Uh, we just take the filters out and we can actually have an electron beam and the, ele and the electron beams are, are, are generally of much higher energy and uh, we can use the beams uh, directly uh, for treatment. Uh, as they emerge from, the, from an accelerator, the beams are only one to two millimeters in diameter. They're quite small, so we have to put in something that's actually going to take the beam and widen it a little bit because uh, uh, we're usually going to treat uh, areas that are going to be uh, greater than that. So we put a, uh, what's known as a scattering foil in there, and uh, these foils uh, are actually designed uh, to give us, uh, to, to spread the beam out uh, a little bit. And uh, that really concludes the, 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 uh, what's actually in the book, but I wanted to talk about, as I said, uh, the safety interlocks and a device that was produced by a company called the uh, a Atomic Energy Company uh, Limited, a AECL. It's a Canadian company, and they made a device that was used a lot in the United States called the Thorac uh, 25. This was a combined um, electron beam and um, was a combined electron beam and X-ray device. So uh, around 1985, uh, they started to have some problems with this device, and uh, there was a woman that was admitted to a hospital in uh, Marietta, Georgia. Uh, actually, it was a it was I believe it was an outpatient uh, treatment area uh, associated with this hospital. And uh, she was uh, being treated for breast cancer. Uh, I'm sorry, no, it actually, it was, uh, she had actually had a, um, a lumpe lumpectomy. So she had a small uh, growth uh, that was removed. And then she was supposed to receive a small amount of, uh, of, um, of x-rays, uh, a series of treatments uh, with a low-level low x-rays uh, to irradiate the surrounding tissue. And what happened was uh, she went in for uh, a treatment, one, one of these treatments, and uh, she, during the treatment, she suddenly, bolt, she suddenly felt this very, very sharp pain and burning in the area where the x-ray was hitting her. 
so she uh, said, told this to the uh, technician and the technician uh, uh, looked at the equipment and uh, uh, the only uh, thing that the technician had noticed was that this equipment uh, actually, um, uh, I think there was an error message that appeared on the equipment and uh, she then um, checked everything out, everything uh, appeared to be okay and then she hit P for pr proceed and uh, that delivered this, uh, this dose of x-rays and according to the, uh, all of the software and the equipment the appropriate uh, dose was actually received by the woman but it turned out uh, that uh, she had received many many times that dose and she complained of burning uh, uh, around that area where she had been irradiated eventually um, over a period of um, maybe um, I guess it was several years she actually wound up dying uh, they said not from the from the from the radiation treatment but from the uh, from the actual spread of the of, of the tumor uh, which th doesn't sound very likely to me but she died I think uh, a, a few years after this happened but in the interim uh, she had lost her breast or because uh, her breast had become necrotic uh, from all of the uh, high energy x-rays that it actually actually it w they, they actually weren't x-rays it turned out later on that what happened instead of her being hit by x-rays, she was basically hit by the, uh, by the, by the electron beam uh, and, uh, and that, that delivered a, a much, much greater amount of radioactivity. So this machine, um, they reported this back to uh, the people that manufactured the machine and they checked the software out and they said, well, it's impossible that this woman uh, uh, received, a, uh, received a burn from this because uh, all of our software uh, has been checked out many, many times, and uh, all of these safety interlocks would have uh, would have would have occurred uh, that would have prevented operation of the machine. Uh, not so, as it turns out. Uh, the machine was used again in in Tyler, Texas, another hospital, and uh, there were two men. Well, there was another woman that was actually treated by this, uh, who also experienced uh, this burning pain, and. Um, she, uh, she, she later on died as well, but again, it was not attributed, directly attributed to the machine. Then there was a gentleman uh, um, who came in, uh, in, in this facility in, um, in, Te in Tyler, Texas, and he had already uh, undergone several treatments uh, using the machine, so he kind of knew what to expect. It, basically, uh, this, the first eight or nine treatments were, were without incident. On one particular time, uh, he, he uh, laid down on the, t on the treatment table, and there were a number of problems that occurred. Uh, again, there was an error message that appeared on the screen, and the operator checked everything out. All the variables seemed to be correct. Uh, so she uh, applied uh, uh, one dose, uh, the, the required dose was applied to this, uh, to this guy on the, on the table, and he actually when this happened he felt this searing pain he was being treated for something I believe it was um, no it was on it was uh, on, on his lower extremities uh, near uh, near uh, I think it was in his leg and he felt this absolutely searing pain uh, to the joint um, and again um, uh, in this particular case uh, it was even more serious because the guy uh, started to get up from the table to go and talk to the technician and the technician, uh, because there was no intercom, uh, there was something malfunctioning with the intercom in the room, she couldn't hear him uh, kind of screaming uh, with pain, and she wasn't looking up. And as he was about to get off, get off of the table, uh, because the instrument said that no dose had been administered, uh, she again uh, pressed the button to administer another dose, and he was again hit in a different area of his body, Again, with this uh, uh, this uh, searing uh, uh, amount of uh, of, uh, uh, of electrons, and um, uh, it was estimated that that he received something on the order of uh, I think 15 to 25 thousand uh, rads, and it was actually probably uh, administered over a period of uh, of maybe one second. So that's an enormous, you know, r realizing that that's uh, that's somewhere on the order of 10 to 15 to 25 sieverts, um, that, that's probably at least 10 times, if not more, uh, the lethal dose of radiation. 
and over a period of about uh, three or four weeks, uh, his condition uh, worsened, and eventually he he died from uh, from the uh, radiation poisoning that he received. The same technician at the exact same facility was treating another patient uh, within the year. Same exact same thing happened, and that patient also uh, succumbed. So. It, uh, there were all kinds of problems with this instrument. Uh, the company uh, ultimately, um, I think they, they, they changed the uh, entire design of it, but all the Thurac 25s, uh, the initial accident that occurred was not reported to the uh, FDA, who was actually in charge of monitoring these kinds of things. Had it been, uh, these subsequent deaths uh, might have been prevented. But there were a lot of injuries that were caused uh, by this machine because um, the safety interlocks uh, failed on the machine. And we've seen other examples of, uh, of uh, people being uh, severely injured uh, because of uh, receiving, uh, for whatever reason, uh, large doses of radiation. We talked last week about um, uh, the individuals who were scavenging um, uh, cesium-137 sources and were exposed to uh, lethal doses of radiation from that. I mentioned the, uh, the case of uh, Evan Byers, who was drinking uh, this uh, quack product uh, uh, that had radium, uh, small amounts of radium salts dissolved in it. Uh, I didn't mention uh, one of the other uh, accidents that occurred uh, had to do with uh, individuals uh, who uh, were, were referred to as the radium girls. And these were women who uh, were paid to paint the luminescent uh, uh, paint that was applied to uh, watch, uh, watch hands and the numbers around watches and clocks. I had one of these clocks uh, uh, in, my, in my bedroom uh, up until the time I was probably uh, uh, maybe 18 or 19 years old and uh, these, rock, uh, these clocks had small amounts of uh, radium salts in them. The women that applied this uh, used to have to uh, actually take the, uh, this very fine brush that they had and in order to get a nice point on the brush they would put the brush into their mouth and moisten it uh, between, their, between their lips. Uh, in doing that they were transferring this radium paint in, into their mouths and many of these women died uh, from a condition not unlike the condition that occurred uh, when uh, Evan Byers was drinking all this radium water. Basically their jaws just rotted out from the cancer. Uh, so that was another example. And uh, the, other, the, the last one that I just briefly wanted to touch on, I didn't really say anything about it, was um, uh, problems that have occurred in, in nuclear power plants. And um, uh, the worst being uh, the one that ha happened in, uh, in the uh, Fukushima plant in Japan, and also uh, uh, the, uh, the thing that took place uh, in, uh, in um, in the former Soviet Union, um, um, the the plant that was uh, incapacitated there and actually had to be uh, encased in concrete in, in Chernobyl. So the Cherno Chernobyl accident and this other one, this uh, uh, Fukushima accident, were the ones that were really uh, the most severe. And there were deaths uh, certainly attributed uh, to uh, Chernobyl. I don't remember exactly how many, uh, but uh, a handful of people, maybe a half a dozen people or so, uh, directly died uh, within a very, very short period of time. These were, I guess, individuals who first got, uh, got to the site uh, and, and were exposed to the, uh, to, the, to the greatest amount of radiation. Uh, you also have uh, things like Three Mile Island, where much, uh, there was much less uh, uh, radioactive material that was actually uh, released into the environment and to the best of anyone's knowledge no one was harmed and there was no permanent environmental damage that was done but the problem had to do uh, with the possibility of a, a complete uh, core meltdown which happened both at Chernobyl and uh, at uh, the Fukushima reactor. So these are all examples of uh, horrible tragedies that have occurred uh, taking people's lives uh, because of exposure uh, to radiation. Okay, so um, that uh, really concludes uh, what I have to say, uh, except that I'm going to give you, I think, um, a, a short, maybe a little short uh, presentation demonstrating how we uh, actually 
uh, make x-rays. Nothing, nothing that I'll say on there will be on the exam, uh, only from uh, this particular lecture. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody uh, for their patience and uh, having to listen to me drone on for the last uh, 12 or 13 weeks uh, with these lectures. And um, I just wanted to say again that we'll have after this, uh, the exam associated with this lecture, there will be a final exam. Uh, I'll probably give you about four questions approximately from each chapter. There'll be a total of about 50 questions. In general, um, the two lectures, I believe there are two lectures that, uh, uh, that uh, Rabbi Weiner is going to give, uh, give to you. And uh, in those two lectures, he will probably give you about, uh, and these are lectures uh, having to do with the Judaic aspects of what we've been talking about. So he'll be giving you, uh, I haven't actually heard the lectures yet, so I'm not really, really sure what the content is, but I'll give you about 20 questions, I think, uh, added on to the 50 that I give you. So there'll be probably a total of uh, 70 questions on the final exam. And again, I wish everybody uh, uh, Hatzlacha on this, and uh, also, um, um, I want to thank you again and uh, hope that uh, I'll have an opportunity to see some of you when you uh, visit uh, IDT uh, for the uh, final phase of the, uh, uh, the final presentation of the awards. Thanks again. Bye.